Hi everyone! Your first option for our mindful doodle unit is to create a centangle. So I'm going to show you a really easy and fun way to split up a whole page that allows you to create a um, cohesive final drawing. So make sure you have a sketchbook, a sheet of paper, and I'll show you some different pens you can use. This is my example that I worked on over a few days. You don't have to work on this in one day and spend like three hours on it. Please think about the creative hack you picked and just set aside maybe 10 to 15 minutes a day or even in between your classes to just work on the Zentangle pattern that you choose to. Adding color will be totally optional, but towards the end of the video, I'll show you how I worked with watercolors and um, go over some simple basic techniques with you if you're interested. So please stick around. You can use any pen you have around you. This is a simple gel pen that I'm showing here. The only downside to certain pens is that if you decide to do watercolor, um, they might not be waterproof. So just be careful with that. You can also use color pens right away and then you don't even have to add color afterwards. These are fine tip pens, so like fine liners. Um, for the color ones, they usually don't come in different sizes, but maybe you have a pack that does that. What I'll be using is actually Micron pens and they are waterproof. So I'm planning ahead. I want to make sure my pens are waterproof because I know I'm going to use watercolors and they come in a lot of different sizes. Here is just a quick flip through of my sketchbook because I had to find a blank page to work on. A little micron tip is to not press super hard because you will actually damage your um, the nib of your pen. So be careful. Next, I am going to grab my painter's tape, the blue tape and actually create a border for myself. This is totally optional. If you are not planning on using anything water-based, um, so any paint and stuff, you don't have to do this. Just set up your page by drawing um, a border if you like, or even use up the entire space, so don't limit yourself. Something to think about is that filling in all of these patterns can take up a lot of time, so work small don't make it too big because it, it might take a lot longer to fill in than than you would expect or um, predict for this project we're trying to focus on the process and not making a perfect final product right so because i'm working in my sketchbook i'm going to let myself experiment a bit so i'm actually taking all of the micron pens i plan on using and because mine are so old, I don't actually know what size each one is. So what you're seeing here is um, I'm using my paper to test it out and it's fine if it becomes a part of the final spread. Um, I have all this extra space, I should use it, I should play around. So this isn't a precious project. Um, experiment, explore, and let yourself try new things. The first step is to take any pen and just draw random lines to separate your page. So these can be organic wavy lines or even go geometric and do some hard shapes. You can see my pen is dying here, but it's fine because these are just the borders. Each shape, each section will have its own pattern. So you might not want to make too many, but up to you. By having this page set up with all of these sections, it allows you to just work on it really slowly. So. Here is an example of um, a past one. I had all of the sections laid out and then whenever it was time to work on it, I fill it in with a different pattern. And they're all completely different, but they come together to create a really cool um, drawing. So that's what you'll be working towards. Each one um, is totally different. So I will provide resources in our Google Classroom if you need some inspiration. But also, each pattern is its just a pattern. These can be completely made up. They are completely made up, so you don't have to look at something and copy it unless you are really stuck. Just play around with different types of lines, wavy lines, straight lines, and create an interesting um, drawing from it. 
This is completely abstract, so you don't have to worry about making it look like something. Just let your mind empty out and enjoy the creative process. This doesn't need to be stressful. Hopefully, it'll be relaxing instead. You might have moments where you regret making a certain line or mark, and that happened with me in this one, um, where I'm just doing straight lines side by side, but changing what direction they go in. Um, even something as simple as that, I made a mistake or something I didn't like, but work through it because look at all of the empty space I still have. Um, I can definitely make up for it. And then if I add color, I can just hide it. So let yourself make those mistakes, work with them, and see if you can make something really cool from it. The rest of the um, doodling time will go by a little faster, but if you do need help drawing a specific pattern, just let me know. While you're making your doodles and patterns, think about what spaces or shapes should be black and which ones should be white. Play around with that so you can create a really interesting balance. For me, I started to plan out where I would want the black ones, like how they would um, change. But then as I sketched the other patterns in the other sections, I kind of just made a template so I could go back and color it in. So I'm outlining things right now, kind of creating a coloring page for myself. And once every single section has its own pattern, I'm going to go back in and make certain parts black. So it's not just a lot of white space and thin lines on the page. The coloring part can be very, very tiring and a little boring. So find a thicker pen if you have access to one or listen to some music, put something on in the background as you zone out and just color it in. For the two patterns I just made, there's a lot of overlapping in them and I particularly really like this kind of look where things look like they're on top of each other and to do that you just have to kind of cut certain shapes um, in half so it's under and over and just play around with the space it's okay if things don't look like they make sense as you work on it since we are going for an abstract look so again let your hands flow just let your mind relax and I'm sure you'll make some patterns you really like and some you absolutely hate because that's what happened with me. So I'm going to um, let the rest of the process be a bit faster and then we'll go into painting if you are interested in that part. If you are not going to add any watercolors, you can go ahead and leave this video unless you would like to see the rest of um, my process. But I didn't film every single pattern I created um, so just a little heads up. Here's what my page looks like when it's all filled up. I can see a little bit optical illusion happening since my <laughs> tripod is shaking a little. Sorry about that. What you'll need is water, a um, watercolor paint set, and one or two brushes. I'm just using one and I'm going to go over one technique really. Um, you'll also need a paper towel or a reusable towel that you're okay with um, getting paint on it. First things first, wet the colors you want to use. So you're going to get your brush wet and just dip it into the colors. I am going to use a minimal color palette, but if, you, if you're not sure what you want to work with, I would just wet all of the colors you have. So just let a few water droplets drip on and let it soak in. I'm looking at my whole entire black and white Zentangle page now. On the right side I have a bit of black in that shape but most of my black areas are on the top left. Honestly I wish it was more balanced um, since the middle section is so white in comparison so I'm going to keep that in mind as I add the color. The watercolor technique that I'll be using is called wet on wet. It's when you take a hopefully a bigger brush than what I'm using and wet your entire page with just clean water. This part 
hopefully you used um, waterproof ink, waterproof pen, so nothing gets smeared. If you're not sure, you should test it out separately and not ruin your hard work. So I'm just soaking up my page. And this is actually a really great technique if you're using any kind of watercolor paper. It will just prep your paper. I'm just using my sketchbook, so I'm kind of not doing it as precisely as I would normally since it is just an experiment. But yes, get it all wet. Next, you're going to get your um, paintbrush and pick whatever color you want to start with. I'm working with an analogous color scheme, which means colors that sit beside each other on the color wheel. So I'm starting with blue, and this is called wet on wet because you're going to put wet paint on top of wet paper, and it will spread in a really cool way. It'll just kind of bleed out. If your paper dries up a little bit like what I did, um, I'm just adding more water to it so it moves on its own. You're letting the paint do its thing, the water do its thing, you're not really um, controlling it. Which is personally how I really like to use watercolors because then it's more organic and I think less, which is kind of fun. So I'm spreading the light blue around and eventually I'll add some reds and purples since those colors are next to each other on the color wheel. Play around with darker blues um, and different shades of purple, red, and blue. Of course, you can just do one color if you want and do lighter and darker versions of it or completely play around with it. Just be careful. Um, if you mix a lot of colors together, you might just end up with a lot of browns, which is totally fine if that's what you're going for, but if it's not, that's a little warning. While you're painting, um, make sure to play around with how much water you're adding to your colors. So you can see me dabbing off XX water um, and making sure just my brush is clean as I mix some colors together. You can always add more colors to it. So I would work light and then make certain sections darker as you go. Um, but let this process be very loose, especially if you are working with watercolor. If you decide to color with anything else, you can color in sections or just do um, little detailed work if that's something you're into. As I finish up my final Zentangle artwork. I'm just going through and adding pops of color here and there, changing any of the colors if I don't like it. Because I did a lot of patterns with a lot of depth, I'm trying to add some of the darker purple um, and just having fun with it. It's okay if you go back and forth. Um, and here is my final piece.